There are many traditions that U.S. brides and grooms are expected to follow at their wedding. One of the most well-known traditions is for a bride to toss her bridal bouquet to the unmarried female guests attending her reception. According to the tradition, the single woman who catches the bouquet will be the next woman to be married. The flowers thrown may not be actually the same flowers the bride carries down the aisle during the wedding ceremony. An identical bouquet is created for the bride to toss. This is because many times the bride wants to keep her original bouquet as a remembrance. Many women take the flower toss very seriously. There have been videos documenting how women will sometimes even fight each other for the bridal bouquet. The groom has something to toss at the wedding reception, too. One tradition is the groom takes a garter from his new wife's leg and toss the garter to the unmarried men attending the reception. According to the tradition, the single man who catches the garter will be the next man to get married. Sometimes the groom will remove the garter from his wife's leg with his teeth. At some wedding receptions, the man who catches the garter has to place it on the leg of the woman who catches the bridal bouquet. Some people think this is too sexual, and to just skip this part, it is the decision of the bride and groom. The bride and groom often toast each other with champagne before the end of the reception. Sometimes a bride and groom will leave the reception before it is over. They go right to the airport to begin their honeymoon, a special vacation celebrating their new life together. Who says adult parties have to be boring? More and more adults are reliving their childhoods or creating memories they didn't have as children by having theme parties for their birthday or other occasions. Theme parties are based on an idea, a television show, a fictional character, or really anything. Sometimes guests are expected to dress according to the theme as well. For example, the toga party is a type of theme party where guests are expected to dress in togas, really just white sheets. Toga parties used to be especially popular among college students. In a masquerade party, everyone wears a mask and has to guess who is behind it. The mystery is part of the fun. Speaking of mystery, there are murder mystery parties, where the guests have to solve a fake murder. Some adults throw parties based on seasons. A summer beach party, for example, might feature guests wearing their swimsuits. Another popular type of theme party is the game night party. In this type of party, people get together to play various board games. A variation of the game night party is the casino party, where adults play games typically found in a casino like blackjack or poker. Another theme party could focus on a specific region or country. For example, a Mexican theme party might feature tacos, the colors of the Mexican flag, and Mexican music. Guests should be careful when dressing up for these types of theme parties, though. Dressing up like a certain ethnic or racial group is usually considered offensive. It's better to just enjoy the food and not portray a stereotype. In the United States, someone legally becomes an adult when they turn 18 years old. At 18, U.S. citizens can vote. They can also serve in the military and go fight in wars for the country. An 18-year-old can also buy cigarettes and other tobacco products, but 18-year-olds cannot buy alcoholic beverages. People in the U.S. need to wait until they are 21 to be able to do that. At the age of 18, people can legally live on their own, work, and get married. However, turning 18 doesn't mean everyone is ready to take on adult responsibilities. At the age of 18, most people are just graduating from high school. Many will go to college. Some young people choose to go to college far from their homes and live in dormitories. Others pick a college close to home and stay with their parents to save money. Yet others will choose to live on their own. Legally, a parent does not have to provide for their child when the child turns 18. Some parents in the U.S. take this very seriously and expect their children to move out as soon as they turn 18. Some parents will even forcibly kick their kids out when the kids turn 18. There tends to be some difference about this depending on if the kid is female or male. It is considered more acceptable for a female to stay living with her parents after her 18th birthday. Many females aren't expected to leave their parents' house until they get married. 
There is still an expectation for young men, however, to go out and live independent lives as soon as they can. With the economy of the U.S. struggling, some adult children are returning to their parents' home in their 20s and 30s. These are called boomerang kids, since, like a boomerang, they return where they came from. In the United States, the baby boomer generation includes those that were born in the time after World War II. Those babies are now reaching the retirement age. As these adults age, many of their adult children worry about how they will take care of their aging parents. In the United States, it is not common for multiple generations to live under one roof. Once children grow up and get married, they move out, leaving their aging parents to fend for themselves. When these aging parents can no longer take care of themselves because of age or illness, it is not uncommon for adult children in the U.S. to place their elderly parents in a nursing home. A nursing home is a facility that offers care for the elderly and ill 24 hours a day. As the name suggests, nursing homes has medical nurses, doctors, social workers, and therapists to help aging adults deal with the challenges of daily life. Most nursing homes also have social activities for the elderly to engage in and keep active. These activities range from games to dance classes and movie nights. Nursing homes are supposed to provide three nutritious meals for their residents. Nursing homes are controversial, however. There have been cases across the country of staff in nursing homes abusing and even robbing the elderly residents. There are different states and federal agencies that are supposed to oversee nursing home facilities. Some people feel that it should be the responsibility of family members, especially adult children, to care for their aging or ill parents. However, many adult children have their own children and families to take care of and do not have the means to care for their elderly parents. Others worry about medical skills needed if their elderly parents are seriously ill. The stereotype is that Americans are lazy, but studies show that people in the U.S. get less vacation time than people in other parts of the world. A typical American worker gets two or three weeks off out of a whole year for vacation. Most U.S. workers cannot take those two or three weeks consecutively. They usually have to be spread out throughout the year. Even when U.S. workers are on vacation, they are often expected to be in communication with their boss. This means checking in via email and mobile phone. Most U.S. businesses do not encourage their employees to take all the vacation days they are entitled to. In fact, most U.S. companies discourage it. Other countries, especially countries in Europe, have much more vacation time. In Germany, many people have six weeks of paid vacation. At least three of these weeks can be taken consecutively. Maybe this is why Europeans and other travelers vacation in far-off exotic places. Most American families tend to stay closer to home, rarely leaving the country. The difference in the amount of vacation time is legal. Most companies in countries outside the U.S. have to give paid time off to their employees or else pay hefty fines. However, in the U.S., there is no federal law requiring employers to give workers paid vacation. In fact, the U.S. is the only developed country that doesn't guarantee yearly time off to workers. There have been efforts to pass laws giving U.S. workers one week of paid vacation by law, but so far, those efforts have not been successful. Even when U.S. workers do have time off, many are afraid to take it because they worry they may be seen as non-productive workers and lose their job. Other workers worry about going on vacation and having a mountain of work when they return. Camping is a popular way for many people in the United States to spend their vacation. Camping involves people leaving the comfort of their home and driving to spend a few nights or more in the great outdoors. When people camp, they can sleep in a tent, a camper, or if they want to be fancier, they can sleep in a cabin. Some people like to really rough it and use no shelter except for a sleeping bag and sleep under the stars. Some people drive across the U.S. in what is known as a recreational vehicle, or RV, which is a trailer. Inside, there are beds, a tiny bathroom, and a kitchen. There are campgrounds all over the United States. 
These are places where campers gather together and usually pay a fee to pitch a tent or place a camper in a designated outdoor spot. Many of these campgrounds have water hoses and electric hookups so that people can wash dishes and themselves and plug in a radio or their computers. Most campsites also have a fire ring or pit, which is a hole in the ground where people can safely make a fire for roasting marshmallows, a popular camping activity. There usually is also a picnic table for people to eat their meals. Many of these campgrounds also have shared bathrooms complete with showers. Some campgrounds have playgrounds, pools, and game rooms. Some also organize activities for people who like sing-alongs, where people will gather together and sing songs. Usually it is illegal to camp in a place not designated as an official campsite, meaning you can't just pitch a tent in a forest. When people go camping, they often do other outdoor activities like fishing, canoeing, hiking, kayaking, swimming, horseback riding, and mountain biking. The United States is a country that has people from all over the world. Not only do many people speak different languages, many people practice different religions. Most people in the U.S. identify as being Christian, but only half of those people attend church on a regular basis. The second most popular religion is Judaism. The third most common religion in the U.S. is Islam. Other religions practiced in the U.S. include Hinduism and Buddhism. About 20% of all people in the U.S. say they don't practice any religion. One of the founding principles of the United States is religious freedom, which means people can practice whatever religion they want without being discriminated against. This is even guaranteed in the U.S. Constitution. This is one reason why the United States has no official religion. Because there are so many different religions in the United States, there are many different types of houses of worship. Christians attend churches. Jews and Hindus attend temples. Muslims attend mosques. Many people use what they wear to reflect their religious beliefs. For example, some Islamic women wear a scarf called hijab to cover their head. It is disrespectful to ask a Muslim woman to take off her hijab or ask for her to show you what is under it. Male followers of an Indian religion called Sikhism usually wear cotton turbans. Again, it is wrong to take a person's turban off or ask that they take it off. Male followers of Hasidism, a branch of Judaism, have long curls on the side of their heads. They wear a fringed prayer shawl. Other Jewish men may wear a small cap on their heads called a yarmulke. This is supposed to be a constant reminder that God is above them. In the United States, people love to throw parties for many reasons. Of course, there are the usual birthday parties, but some people even have parties to celebrate divorces. No matter what kind of party you are going to, it's a good idea to make sure you are actually invited. It's considered rude to just show up unless the host, the person giving the party, invited you. You will either get a paper, email, or verbal invitation to a party, Alternately, you can also go as a guest of someone else invited, like as his or her date. Once invited, it is very important to let the host know if you are actually going to show up. Many times, hosts have a party catered, which means other people prepare the food. They need to know how much food to have. Letting them know if you are showing up or not helps the host and is considered polite. It's also important to be relatively punctual for a party, most parties in the U.S. never start exactly when they say they will. Many people like to be fashionably late, that is, showing up about 30 minutes after the party is supposed to start. People like to do this to make a big entrance. Showing up more than 30 minutes before or after is considered rude, though. If you show up too early, you are likely to interrupt valuable preparation time of the host, if you show up too late, you are just being rude. Even if it is not a birthday party, it is polite to bring a gift for the host. It doesn't need to be a fancy gift. A bottle of wine or even flowers is polite and will be appreciated. A housewarming party is a special party to be held when someone buys or moves into a new apartment or house. The person or people who bought the property or moved are the ones who throw the party. The party is an opportunity for friends and family to congratulate the person on the new home. 
It also gives people a chance to see what the new home looks like. It's an opportunity to fill the new space with love and hopefully presents. It is traditional to bring a gift to a housewarming party. Some people register a list of items they want or need for their new home at a local store or stores. Some common items people will put on a gift registry include kitchen tools like knives and items like curtains. Even if there isn't a registry, a good housewarming gift is something to decorate the new house with like a piece of art or a plant. You can also bring food or drinks to share with the other guests. This is often appreciated since at a housewarming there isn't a lot of food served, usually just appetizers or sandwiches. There are usually no planned activities like games at a housewarming party. The host or hostess of the party will, however, probably give all the guests a tour of their new home. Sometimes, because a housewarming party happens shortly after a person moves into their new home, people may be asked to help unpack boxes. This isn't usual, though. Housewarming parties get their name from the fact that a long time ago, people would actually bring firewood to a new home as a gift. This was so that the person could keep their home warm for the winter. Now, most homes have central heating and don't use fires to keep warm. The religious or civil ceremony that makes people legally a married couple is just one part of the actual wedding. After the wedding comes the reception. A wedding reception is a party held immediately after the marriage ceremony. Usually there is a little bit of time, about an hour between the ceremony and the reception, to give people enough time to travel from the ceremony location to the reception location. Most wedding receptions are held at a catering hall, which is a place that specializes in hosting big parties. However, wedding receptions can be held in restaurants, parks, and even in museums or zoos. A wedding reception is usually not held at the same place as the ceremony, but sometimes they do. When guests arrive at the reception, the bride and groom are usually not there to meet them. Right after the ceremony, the newly married couple, the bridesmaids, and the groomsmen will go somewhere to have photographs taken. While this is happening, guests are usually treated to a cocktail hour at the reception site. During this time, appetizers and drinks are served. This also gives guests a chance to socialize. After the cocktail hour, the main dining hall is opened. At a wedding reception, the seating is usually prearranged. Each guest will receive a card telling him or her where they are expected to sit. Tables are arranged by numbers. In front of the reception hall, there's a special table for the bride and groom. Once everyone is seated, waiters begin to serve salad or bread and drinks. Some receptions have an open bar, meaning the alcohol is free. Other receptions have a case bar, meaning non-alcoholic beverages are free. Guests are expected to pay for their own alcoholic drinks. There can be different kinds of entertainment at a wedding reception. Usually there will be a master of ceremonies or MC who helps move the reception along by making announcements of what will happen next. For example, the MC will announce when the newly married couple enters the reception hall and all the guests will stand up and applaud. A wedding reception usually has music and guests are expected to dance. The music can be provided by a DJ or by a live band. Sometimes the DJ or a live band will accept requests from guests to play a certain song. When the newly married couple enters the reception, they will share a dance by themselves to a song they picked beforehand. Usually, the song is something romantic and represents the couple's love for one another. Sometimes the bride will share a dance with her father and the groom will share a dance with his mother. After these special dances, the guests are invited to the dance floor. Food at a wedding reception can be buffet style, where everyone serves himself or herself, or it can be a sit-down meal served by waiters. Guests get to choose among a meat, chicken, or fish deal. Guests generally make their choices when they respond to the initial wedding invitations. During a wedding, guests shouldn't expect to spend too much time with the bride and groom. The new couple is usually very busy greeting all of their guests. Sometimes the couple doesn't even get a chance to eat. What almost every newly married couple does get to eat at their wedding reception is the wedding cake. The bride and groom traditionally cut through the wedding cake together and then feed the other person a bite.